Welcome to Anchor Moments. I'm Gina LeBenz, and I have my good friend Frank here with me. Frank Lutz, correct? That's correct. Say yeah. that I'm just used to calling you Frank. I want to make sure that I said that last That's name it. right. Yeah. Uh, Frank, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, we. Uh, where do you want to start? <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, well, I was uh, born in Frankfurt, Germany. Really? Came in this country wow. in 1972. Okay. Grew up in New York City. I hear and, that New York in there. Yeah, and I had a wonderful mother that kept us straight because in the 70s in New York, as many of you know, can be, it was a rough Ooh. place. Oh, yeah. And slowly, little by little, I uh, inched my way on a jazz trombone, got me to the School of uh, Music and Art, the Fame School. Oh, really? From the Fame TV show yes. back in the day? Yeah, which wow. was pretty cool. You know, I started taking music serious. Um, went to Hebrew, Hebrew School of the Arts, okay. got scholarships there, and you know, so I took off in this whole music direction and played with Tito Puente, Dizzy Gillespie, Lionel wow. Hampton, Bradford Marcellus, Carnegie Hall. I mean, my life was all music. And after, wow. after all of that uh, playing, got through school, and here comes college, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. college wasn't really my thing, so I took a hard left and joined the Navy. <laughs> I didn't know you were in the military. A lot, I know a so. lot of things about Frank, <laughs> but I do not know any of this backstory. Yeah. Wow, so, so you military, were in the Navy. In the Navy, was in the Persian Gulf doing minesweep operations. Wow. Based out of San Diego, did a whole world tour, which is really cool. And, you know, you kind of, for me, it was working the left side of the brain and then working the right side. Yeah, because that's just, a big difference between the Navy yeah. and, you know, playing at Carnegie Hall. Yeah, of course, the military wanted me to play music and, you know, march. And oh, I sure. And decided, uh, you know, not to do that. That wasn't my thing, you know. But uh, got out of the military in San Diego. Wasn't mm -hmm. really, didn't have much talent for skill set met my wife at the time, hmm. whose father was in the automotive business. That's how you got into automotive? A big shout out to my wife, Josephine, yeah. right? Aww. And so I started uh, in the automotive industry with my father-in-law. Okay. And then in 1995, went into business, opened my first garage, doing lots of things wrong, mm -hmm. by way of sort of not having a business model. Mm -hmm. Many of us can, have the heart and passion, but slowly I got there and we sold that in 2002-ish. Okay. And then opened up Desert Car Care, Chandler and Dobson. And wow. since then, I uh, do a lot of work with ABC 15, do all mm -hmm. the car care stuff. I do represent the industry uh, with ASA, Automotive Service oh, Association. That. And we have about 100,000 mechanics nationally and I work with a lobbyist. So we're safe as an aftermarket by way of the information and the technology that we can receive and fix these cars properly. So that's uh, in wow. a nutshell. I mean, we can go deeper uh, if you'd like, but, uh, but that's in a nutshell. That's my gig. That's your gig. That's my gig. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, good stuff. Now, um, another thing that I don't know about you, Frank, is I don't know your special stories of when you have felt God's presence in your life. Yeah. Can you tell us about some of those special anchor moments? Absolutely, I mean, there's many. I will tell you that growing up in the city during the time of the 1970s and 80s, mm -hmm. there was a lot of drugs. As a kid, I would see yeah. heroin being shot up on the street, on a street corner. And you know, for a kid to witness that and see that, you have, to, you have to envision a straight path. And mm -hmm. sometimes as a kid, you, you just don't know that there is this bigger message coming right. through you. Um, and so there are many occasions where I could have gone to a whole different path. A whole different path. We're talking about the crack cocaine scene uh, in the early 80s in New York mm -hmm. City was rough. Um, a lot of guys and gals that I grew up with, they all wanted that fast life that fast money. Mm -hmm. And so I always knew between my wonderful mother who was a rock, who kept us straight, okay. kept us organized. For me, 
not getting involved in that whole direction, that was a series of anchor moments. And then wow. sometimes in life, you don't, we don't look at it as, as, sometimes we don't know that this is a message mm -hmm. that we're getting, you know, and you have to be grateful and thankful. And I think we can do a better job thanking the people in our life that sometimes mm -hmm. we take for granted, right? Right. You know, so. You know, I always talk about that. Um, there are times in our life where sometimes we're called to be an angel for somebody and we're called to be that hands and feet of Christ. And there are other times that, oh, thank God, he sends us some people to be his hands and feet and yeah. to help us during some of those times. Yeah. And so you've had some angels in your life, I take it. Absolutely. And I think at the time, a lot of us, we, we don't know that, you know, I didn't, I didn't grow up particularly uh, religious, to be quite frank with you. And sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes we don't know mm -hmm. that this is actually an angel or a bigger voice that mm -hmm. sends a message, you know, to mm -hmm. us. So it's in hindsight, sometimes we reflect. And I think that Absolutely. enables us mm -hmm. to grow more and get connected with God and have have that faith and hope about what we're doing you know mm -hmm. so later on in life it's a different perspective but I know we have a lot of youngsters out there that they may be at a crossroads and they're not mm -hmm. sure so I would say that in, in in my time of a multitude of anchor moments if you will you have to gravitate to the best positive outlet that you can and in hindsight you realize hmm that was an angel. Or exactly. the people, like I said, that we take for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, we take for granted. We don't realize, it's funny how life works that, you know, these things are, shouldn't be rear view mirror. And as we get older, we realize that it's the front mirror, that this person mm -hmm. is actually helping, or the situation is working out because there's a, a bigger power, there's a bigger presence to exactly. that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And sometimes that's a place to start. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was a place to start where I could look at at times in my life that uh, special coincidences happen where you think, gosh, what are the odds of that? You know, and, yeah. and be able to see that God was present there. But then with prayer, you can ask for God to show you signs for, for going on the right path in the future too and that is really exciting and it's been really helpful for me yeah um, and uh, what where in, are some yeah. times that that's happened to you well uh, military for sure you know I was uh, uh, in the in the Navy obviously and doing minesweep operations with active gunboats Iranian oh. gunboats and you know you you kick wow. back in training and you 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 think about all these things that you're sort of technically prepared for, but in that moment, you do say a prayer to watch oh, yeah. over um, not only yourself, but your team and, and everyone else, and you, you pray for peace, honestly. Yeah. You know, isn't that the case? Like, we're mm -hmm. set up in these positions, and sometimes we don't have an opportunity to pray beforehand because mm -hmm. things just come so fast. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, I think about, um, I think about the times growing up in New York where you don't, you don't, you can't plan or prepare for mm -hmm. things that just happen. And all you have really is just to wish upon peace for exactly. whatever the situation you're in. Uh, military, definitely. Uh, my music for me, there was anxiety performing. So really? Keep, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There's always anxiety beforehand. You know, you mm -hmm. practice and shed and, you know, you go through your, your your instrument and you think you know the song the best you can and and then you hit it and you got to say for me it's all about the peace of what's mm -hmm. happening and then you're in the moment that's it. right you're in it right and and I think afterwards part of my reflection is always to do with the gratitude no matter what happens mm -hmm. no matter what happens right and then there's always a message not so much that we can do better but there's a message that we had an opportunity to share things and mm -hmm. you know that next opportunity we'll share even more see we beat ourselves up I think I think we beat ourselves up I know I do at times mm -hmm. where we may have a message and you know sometimes we say well 
that wasn't done properly or, you know. Mm. If I could do it there. again, I would do yeah. it better. And yeah. I don't think it's a matter of doing it better. I think it's just being in the moment okay. and uh, just throwing out the gratitude that you did your best. You did your best. Can you give us a, a specific example of, of when that happened in your life? Yeah, well, um, we adopted. That was a big deal for us. Oh, I didn't. So you've adopted your children? Well, my oldest oh, is, is, okay. is not adopted, but okay. my youngest is adopted. And uh, there was a tragedy in her family. She mm. was three years old. And the state was going to take the child. And my wife and I said, you know, we're not going to have that. So CPS came in and interviewed. And throughout that whole process, I was, I was really reflecting and praying that the outcome for this child would be the mm -hmm. best. I mean, obviously, we wanted to be the parents. Well, we sure. To have that. But it was really just the, no matter what happened in that moment, that everything would work out with this three-year-old who's now my daughter. She's 10 Aww. now, my little Natalie, so. Wow, yeah. and see, I didn't know that either, that yeah. you had adopted. Mm -hmm. wow. And to us, uh, my wife and I both, you could look at every day as a challenge mm -hmm. of new things in a new arena, but to me, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing. I think it's the eyes that we have that we need to look at these things a little differently. And I think we have a tendency to, when we're on the top, that's when things are good, and that's mm -hmm. how we sort of feel like we're blessed. I mean, that's good, but it yeah. doesn't count. It's when we're on the bottom or when we, when we have some adversity, uh, that's where it counts. I think that's where the message counts. You know, I was hiking recently, and I thought to myself, you know, I'm gonna do a Facebook Live and talk about my, I had an ankle issue recently, broke the ankle, and I was out for quite some time, a lot mm -hmm. of pain and all this kind of stuff. And I thought to myself, you know, when we're on the bottom, that's where we, that's where we see things a lot clearer. Mm -hmm. That's where I we hear see that. the opportunity, mm -hmm. right? And that's right. when we, so I'm not saying we stay on the bottom, but I think, I think that's where we really got to focus, where some would say, I can't get out of this hole, or I can't get out of this particular tragedy, or this particular illness, oh. or um, an opportunity that didn't work out for us. We have a tendency to just kind of put that cloud over us, and it's this negative situation and I think we should take a deep breath and reverse that because that's where the opportunities truly lie. Time also plays with us. We give up uh -huh. because we thought, okay, this should be happening now or a week later, this should be happening now. I should be healing now, yeah. but I'm not. I should have this opportunity at work or you know, the business that I have should be evolving and it's not. And uh -huh. we say time is it's time, right? It's this time, and I think time can work against us. And I think we should, we should understand every day is a new day and a new day of opportunity mm -hmm. and not let time, time is perception. We're basing time on somebody else's. Well, they did it within this time frame. How mm -hmm. can I? Or they got better and they healed up and how come I'm not? You know? mm -hmm. I think time really can, uh, for me sometimes, I, it can be an enemy of mine is time. Right. You know. But sometimes that's where you find, that's where you can find gratitude. In, in the, if you could, yeah. And it'll help pull you out of that hole. Um, that's all we have. Really. Yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, if we're not grateful about whatever situations, and it's not easy. No. Uh, some of us are in some deep situations. So you were telling us that you used to have four? Well, at one time I had three locations oh, with okay. uh, Desert Car Care and sold two of those. And, you know, throughout the whole process, I think the biggest thing with business is you're, you're building teams and culture. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as long as you're providing value in the community. This is what I tell a lot of other shop owners across mm -hmm. the country that, you know, you can do the typical marketing. That mm -hmm. is sort of these coupons or you can slowly etch out what is your business, a vessel in the community. Oh. A vessel mm -hmm. in the community. And look, business is business and there are objectives and you've gotta stay on top of those. But um, the story of my first business, um, when I started, 1995, mm -hmm. I had 18 hour days. I missed the first three years of my daughter's life because I was oh. working, working, working. Had no concept of, 
you know, systems and procedures and policies mm -hmm. and delegating and building a culture where, you know, you let the good people that you surround yourself with do the good things that yeah. they can do. And so I know we have a lot of younger entrepreneurs out there mm -hmm. um, because what I see now, which I think is dangerous, is this sort of overnight success kind of thing where yeah. people are preaching that by this system and you know overnight this is mm -hmm. gonna happen. And it, it's not the case. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears and passion. You gotta remember why it is you're doing what you're doing. And as long as you're connected to that I, I don't think I don't think there's anything that you cannot do. Mm -hmm. If you give up on the thing that you like, the passion and drive for what you like, it's time to move on. Otherwise, you can't fake it. You really no. can't. And you know, so there have been many occasions. I had my first business when I sold that. We had grown it from a very small garage, and uh, of course, I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, essentially. I thought I was going to be the cheapest guy in town and that was mm -hmm. I was going to build my business and you know you want a fair price but that fair price should include what sustains Keeps a, the a lights profit, on. Yeah. a profit, yeah. a paying good people so mm -hmm. that they stick around and so I mean it was a bloody mess and, and it was very rough but as time went on um, it's amazing how pain, <laughs> pain mm -hmm. of not being able to pay your bills, mm -hmm. pain of owing you know taxes let's say all these oh, things yeah. you know and so I know we have a lot of youngsters out there that are starting business so or, or even uh, we have some uh, folks that are uh, retired from a corporation or something and then they want to go into business mm -hmm. it, I think there is uh, an important point to create the value and you have to be passionate about what you do at the same time so it's very important mm -hmm. yeah did you pray a lot while doing in your different businesses? Yeah, this is yeah. the thing. I mean, whether you're praying before, you know, you hope it works yeah. out, or you're praying afterwards, what I did, hopefully it works out. I mean, there's a lot of prayer. You have to have faith. You That's know, right. I always believe that you focus on what's in front of you like a car with its headlights, right? Mm -hmm. We've all heard that. You know, you focus on the light that's in front of you. Sometimes we can worry right. about stuff we can't see, but mm -hmm. do the best you can with what's in front of you. And mm -hmm. absolutely, there's a lot of prayer and uh, faith in that what you're doing is centered and you can succeed or do the very best you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever felt God guide you to, because uh, you've done a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, going from music, you know, did, um, or in that, you know, you said you've had a lot of experiences as a kid that helped really develop you. Mm -hmm. And, um, and a lot of times that could have been very scary that things could have gone another direction. Yeah. Was there ever a time in there that there was someone that was a special mentor or that you could give me a story yeah. of where um, you were able to take the right turn and that God was there for you? Yeah, I will tell you that many of my moments um, weren't always at the moment of feeling mm -hmm. of as I said, as a youngster, I probably wasn't connected as much as I should have to mm -hmm. God's message and so on. And it was always in hindsight. But I do have a story. So uh, my youngest mother, before she passed away, we went to the beach and I was with my oldest daughter and uh, my youngest mother when she was alive. And okay. they went out swimming and I had told them, of course, in California, you know, you get riptides and oh, it can be yeah. dangerous. So my oldest is a decent swimmer, but uh, Jessica, my youngest mother, who's not around anymore, she's not a great swimmer. So I said, listen, you're not going to go above your waist. And that's that. You, know, you can't get into the deep end. And she wasn't really a proficient swimmer. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I were hanging out on the beach and the kids are in the water. They're doing their thing. And I'm laying down and my wife says to me, they're separating. It looks like they're they're not together. They got oh. caught in a riptide. So I go out swimming. I pass my daughter, who I know I see I see my I see Jessica going down, kind of bobbling up and down. She's in trouble. Oh yeah. And my daughter, who I know can get by, I always told obviously in a riptide you don't swim towards the shore. 
you take your time, you know you're in it, you take a deep breath, and you swim parallel. Yeah, right? parallel to the beach. So my daughter kind of knew that, beach. but I had to leave one of my kids to go after the other the kid that was sinking. She was going oh. under. And so as I was approaching her, she was screaming and she was crying and she was wailing. So I knew, okay, she's got an airway, which is good. Because in yeah. many occasions, if they're going under and they're frantic, right. you know what happens. You've got to knock them out because if not, they're going to take you down. Oh. Absolutely. Okay. This is a basic tenant in, in you know, uh, rescue, rescue swimming and, and as, as a lifeguard. If you have someone that's panicking, which they could, right? They're drowning. They're panicking. Right, they're panicked. They can take you down. So that right. well, it wasn't as as bad of a case. But my point is, I went in, grabbed her, put her in a in a hold, and brought her back in. And I'm thinking the whole time, my daughter Victoria, what's going on with my daughter? She made it in okay. After everything was said and done, we were just totally frazzled. I was. Could you imagine? Uh, I'm thinking on the way, I cannot have a dead kid. I can't take this right. kid back in a body bag to her parents. We so, reflected. Oh, my goodness. And my daughter, this is the moment, my oldest daughter, I asked her, honey, how did you make it? How did you manage? How was things? How did you do it? Uh -huh. And she said, Dad, I was good. I had this white ball following me the whole time really absolutely and i gotta tell you you know and that white ball was probably jesus right there with her or absolutely God in absolutely that. absolutely wow. because you got to think about this here's a riptide like we're not we don't live in the ocean right we're not right. out there every morning surfing and all this kind of stuff i mean we're like tourists on the beach and my daughter's halfway decent swimming but i had to leave her to and get go her friend. get and go get Jessica, who was totally in trouble. She could have easily drowned. Oh, yeah. And, you know, many would say, okay, where were the lifeguards, this, that, and the other thing. But, I mean, we're on a beach. This oh, is, yeah. This, was, this is the ocean. This is the ocean, you it's know. The and ocean. So my point is, after we reflected, my knees were shaking. I mean, through the night and th that following day, I asked my daughter, you know, how did you, how did you manage this? Because I couldn't get her. Mm -hmm. And she said, Dad, she was so confident. Wow. She was so reassuring. She was like, Dad, I had this white ball that was following me, and I felt okay. Wow. Felt okay. And so, yes. like, I think about that. That was her, that's her I get chills. Moment. I yeah. get chills thinking about it. And, yeah. And my thing is, we don't always think, like, we're in the moment. Sure, we're going we're gonna to say a prayer and, and ask to be safe throughout whatever is going to happen. Right. But most of us, really, we understand that we have to act in the moment for whatever it is, right? right? So whether it's that rescue swim or whether it's a moment in business where we really need to, you know, pull up our pants and, and really get through it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, or we have a relationship issue, right? Right. We have to say a quick prayer. Mm -hmm and get to what we got to get to. We have to act mm -hmm. upon what we got to act upon and that's up to all of us and it's not always easy. So, but that's that. Yeah, but it's always easy with prayer when you have that, yeah. uh, and when have I, some help. It was hard for me yeah. when, we, when we lost Jessica, you know, who's Natalie's mother. It was hard for me to, to have to deal with that because I almost Wait. lost her out at the ocean and she had passed later on in life. That's Natalie's biological mother, my daughter, wow. my youngest daughter, who we adopted. So that connection there, you see how that works. It's, uh, it's, it's a journey, man. I always say you got to trust your journey. Wow. Trust your journey, and you know, throughout that whole episode of connecting with that, I now have her daughter. Wow. I now have her daughter. You know, and so. Life and Jessica was the one that, that, that you rescued. That's correct. And yeah. you now I have her daughter. Are, Jessica's are the, no longer with us. That was many years after that. Wow. Yeah. So, and now you're taking care and, of absolutely. her daughter and adopted her daughter. Absolutely, yeah. So, wow. How old was Jessica when you saved her? She was 17, 18. Uh, no, she was 15, 16. She passed when she was 18, 19. 
Oh my goodness. 1920 in that range. Right she in that range. Old. Yeah. And and you adopted her daughter. Yeah. And and we I mean you don't know. And this so when you, you when you when you when happen. you rescued her she she yeah. wasn't a mom yet. No. 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 So her yeah. daughter would have never been born if she had drowned in that ocean. Oh my goodness. Along no, think with, about yeah, that. Yeah. Along with think many other that. things. I mean, I mean, could yeah. you imagine um yeah. So absolutely wow. that that was a message for me. Wow, and that is so, a huge So like as we moment. grow yeah. like, you know, we sometimes we are we are our worst enemy by way of how we don't connect with and faith. We do need to and connect. we don't have hope. Sometimes we're so lost. Like that could that whole episode could have gone down in many ways. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the child. I mean, CPS was going to come in and take this kid. And and my wife and I, I mean, you think you have a life plan, right? right. We're going to be empty nesters, we're going to yes. right all this kind of stuff and no, man, you embrace that, and we fought for that, actually. We fought for that. And wow. so, you know, I think, I think to all the fathers and mothers out there, I didn't, I didn't really grow up with a father, right? So I right. should have been a statistic, right? I should have been a guy that's right. been divorced eight times, and I've been with my wife almost, uh, almost 30 years now. Yeah. Right, which is really cool. We and now sort of grew up together. And adopted dad and Absolutely. everything. Absolutely, yeah. And so you know what? We you just, just have a minute. It. We just have a minute left. Yes. So we're going to do a super quick prayer. Yes. Right now, because I always end my anchor moment show with a prayer. And who would you like to, for us to pray for in the audience? Well, I'll you? tell you who I'd like to pray for. I'd like to pray for our leaders. Let's I'd like do to that. pray for our leaders, both uh, on a uh, macro level throughout the world and on a micro level here yes. in our local communities. We pray for our leaders mm -hmm. to have Let's the humility. Let's start it right now. God, please help us. Help our leaders, God. Go ahead. Help our leaders. Uh, give them the humility. Give them the balance. Give them the, the wisdom and the fortitude to make the best decisions for all people. Give them the strength. Give them the guidance. Give them the ability to listen. Give them the ability to connect with people directly in their community. We thank you, God. For helping our leaders. Amen. Uh, yeah, amen. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.